What's up YouTube? I finally got my CNC machine together and running. Uh, I started this back in June, I think. And it's just now the 2nd of September Labor Day, 2013. Uh, <clears throat> just thought I'd show a video of it. I, I had it working up and running. I was testing it and I blew a driver board. So it took me some time to re get that replaced. This uh, replacement parts always come from Hong Kong or somewhere in China, so it takes forever to get. So anyhow, it delayed me for quite a while. Uh, this is something, a project I've been working on, um, just on my, on my spare time, I do have a full-time job besides this, and I've been uh, trying to make designs for, you know, for items to, to cut on this. I haven't actually made my first cut, but I do have it ready, so I'll be doing that shortly, and I'll probably take a video of that too. So, to point out a couple of things about the machine, it is huge, and there's my little four-year-old. Um, it's four foot, it's actually uh, 40... 9 inches by 97 inches. This is MDF board here and it's actually oversized by an inch each direction. And the whole thing pretty much is constructed out of MDF. I don't think I'd go that way on the next design um, only because of this exact problem. When you go, you put these cross dowels in. Let's see if I can focus here for you. You put the cross dowels in, you tighten them up and they just sink right in. They just pull through. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of an inferior material. It'll hold together just fine. It's decently rigid. Um, as far as um, you know, pushing on it or or shaking the thing, it, it doesn't have too much resonance. It's nice and rigid that way, uh, but it's it's just not a super strong material. So anyhow, uh, a couple of particulars about my design: I use the double lead screw for the long x-axis, and that's just it's just a half inch by 12 all thread that goes all the way down. Do that on both sides. under here and I have the <clears throat> the fastener is just a a connector or a, uh, a coupler a half inch 12 coupler that I have welded onto this bracket here and then screwed into the gantry um, I do have on all the axis so I did the same thing for the Y here it's got the same thread and then the Z as well here has the same thread um, connected to the stepper motors directly on the Y and Z. On the X I did something a little different, but I did want to point out I don't just have these going into wood, I do have bearings. They're not thrust bearings, they're just regular ball bearings, uh, half inch ID. So we'll see how long these last. I have them kind of inset into the into the wood end here. Um, and then I use the V-Groove bearings from VXB. They're VXB brand, brand V-Groove bearings. I think they're the only ones who make them. Got them on eBay, pack of 12, I think, or 16 for pretty cheap. Um, I decided to go this way instead of just using a bunch of regular ball bearing, you know, uh, these kind of bearings, just because this would give you much better uh, locking down your degrees of freedom. So I just did two on top, one on bottom. I'll probably change that in the future too, go and do two on top, two on bottom. But I had to make this whole thing by hand. So <clears throat> it, took me, it took me a long time. I didn't have the, the ability to cut with this with this uh, you know CNC router, so I I kind of did everything as as easily as possible. So anyhow, I got three groove, V groove bearings on these axes as well. So you got one there or two there rather, and one on this side. You can see my V groove bearings kind of staggered from each other to try and create as much much uh, tension as possible. I do have pushing in on this bolt here. This bolt is in a groove, there's a slot there that it rides in, and this screw is pushing on that bolt by way of this cross dowel, and that's what's providing pressure on the V-groove bearing in that direction. Sorry, I have to keep refocusing my camera here. Right, it's a camera phone, so it's kind of subpar. Anyhow, <clears throat> have uh, the flexible couplings, got those cheap on eBay as well. They're, they do so-so. Uh, they didn't quite fit even though that they were advertised as, as the right size for these shafts and stepper motors, they didn't quite fit, so I had to hollow them out a little. No big deal, a little bit of time on the drill press. So the big difference on the x-axis is this one, is that these two here are 425 ounce inch stepper motors, bipolar. This is a single 1600 ounce inch, so it's a, it's a beast. I mean, thanks to my hand. I don't know how much force that looks like to you, but it is a lot. It's so much so that I can grab on to this gantry here and it will pull me across the room, even if I dig my heels in. Um, I have it stepped 
so I've got a 28 tooth gear here I believe I got from McMaster car I have stepped to a 14 here so there's a 2 to 1 ratio um, so that, that 1600 Allen cinch is, is supplying power to both lead screws at once I wanted to do that so I wouldn't be missing steps if I were to put a motor on one lead screw and a motor on another I could have done a 4 axis thing uh, it'd really be like a 3.1 axis Anyhow, I, I decided to do this just because I wouldn't be missing steps. It's always in sync, and the gantry uh, relatively is is in parallel with itself. So anyhow, that's the big guy right there. Uh, one other difference from most other designs you'll see is that I stuck the electronics right into the gantry. Usually, you'll see I'm just running the big uh, the big wire straight to the motors from uh, from electronics somewhere else. So I stuck the electronics in there really just to save on my thick wire I didn't want to use a lot of that so I just ran a single power wire to the gantry and sorry this looks terrible it's not very clean I, I will be putting a some some uh, wire loom or shielding on here and then I used Ethernet cable for the uh, pulse pulse and direction inputs into the drivers these are drivers uh, they came from Wantai Motor off eBay and you see the elephant there and I did have one blowout like I said during testing um, anyhow it's it's cool it, they sent me a new one and, and, and we're all good it just takes a while to get things from from China so anyhow it's running so I'm gonna run this is something that I showed my brother uh, this is a dust hood so it just allows me to plug a shop vac in to that hole it's much bigger than this obviously I, I plug a shop vac hose right there there's going to be a skirt around here, and then this is where the router head comes out, and then this is where it bolts onto the machine. Now I'll go ahead and show you. <clears throat> this, again, it's a, it's a wooden machine, so it's, it's not going to have a lot of accuracy. It's not, you know, your, your maze axe and all that, um, but it's just a wood router. Right now I have a quarter inch bit in there. It just pops down through the hole, and you cut. It just pops down right through the hole there, and you just cut whatever's whatever's below that surface so i'll run this program real quickly and end this video and hopefully i'll have a video up in a moment of me actually cutting this thing so this is the dust hood sorry i'm looking at the screen and the phone at the same time cycle start and you see this thing going back to its zero point the origin it's going to start actually it's going to go to this hole which isn't quite the origin but i'll give you a, a video of this thing moving around so you just kind of have to imagine that there's a router bit and a piece of uh, a piece of wood that below it that we're cutting. And this works pretty well. Uh, a couple of regrets again, I wouldn't use the MDF again. I would probably use uh, some kind of plywood, something that's not going to tear through as easily. Let's see if we can get a fit. See that going up and down. These wires are in a little bit of danger of being pinched. I'll have to monitor that. Um, in the future, I would rather do something besides all thread. I see a lot of designs that use uh, roller chain or timing belt or even like ground ball screw. All those would be nice. Some of them you sacrifice accuracy, some of them are just so expensive. So this was just a cheap option to get me up and running was the all thread and seriously a stick of uh, uh, half inch 12 10 foot long all threads only ten dollars so this was just the cheap solution to get me going um, it's getting pretty close to being done cutting and I have it run as 60 inches per minute currently it could probably do more than that but when I actually cut I'm probably only going to cut at probably 30 so it's going to be going half this fast when I'm actually running a router through the wood. Um, I hope to take a video of that here shortly, but that's my uh, CNC router. I'm pretty pleased with it. Hopefully I can make some cool things with it. I'm pretty creative as far as, you know, ideas that I want to make on this thing. Anyhow, I just, just finished its cut. I think that took a couple of minutes. I'm using the Mach 3 software, which is pretty much what everyone uses. This is the trial version, or the demo version currently. I will have to upgrade that because it will only run 50 lines of CNC right now. 
this dust hood is less than that. It's only 18 lines because it's only what six holes, five five holes, and then the outer profile. So that's only 18 lines of code. So it doesn't take very long, and it's also not very complex code. So this can run it in demo mode. I'll have to upgrade it for anything um, anything better. So anyhow, if you got some good ideas of how I can improve the machine, let me know. Um, I did see a nice video on how to improve the V-Groove accuracy, the V-Groove bearing accuracy, and I'll probably implement that. It's using some shims. Um, anyhow, just sharing my, sharing my story, and hopefully you guys enjoy. Thanks.